are listening to WHOA Podcast, coming to you from Gainesville, Florida. Podcast fam, what is up? Colin here. I am at Opus Coffee's brand new location with Tim and Brett Larson. They were on episode 19 like a year ago, and they are going to be one of our first podcast sponsors. Thank you guys. Tell the podcast family everything you got going on. People have been asking for years, when are you gonna open your first location outside of UF Health? September 29th is the day. We're having our opening party. We're gonna have raffles, free prizes. We're gonna have live music. September 29th, we're right on 800 Southwest 2nd Avenue. This place is absolutely gorgeous. Come check it out. They, they're even opening another spot at their food park. When, in October? Mid-October. Mid-October, yeah. lots of exciting things happening. Come check them out, Opus Coffee. Thank you guys for sponsoring, we appreciate you. We'll see you later. Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of the WHOA GNV Podcast, the podcast bringing you businesses and individuals that make you go, whoa. My name is Colin Austin and my co-host, hold on, let me find his Uh-oh. amazing intro. My co-host puts the COE, that's the chief of everything, the COE in Scooter. <laughs> <laughs> he eats hard work for breakfast and loves a gator tailgate. He is the Sultan of Scoots himself, Michael Dees. I, I love whoever writes these. They're, they're fantastic. <laughs> who, who it, it? Yeah, Rebecca. It, Rebecca, good job. Rebecca, it, come over here. Give me some credit. <laughs> get, on, get on camera. Just wave. Come on. Yep. They, they surprised me. Everybody. Rebecca Hi. and her copy. How long Amazing did, work. How long did it take you to think of COE and Scooter? Yeah. Like, that was good. Not too long. <laughs> not too really? good. Good. Well I done. I thought it was dumb for a while. <laughs> <laughs> Which That's is why awesome. you knew it was appropriate for me. <laughs> That's awesome. I, don't, don't worry. I got you. I feel it. Fine. Mike, what is up, dude? What's no, going on? Dude, this is, the, the energy's back. I know. Gainesville's back. Like, yes. I, I, I spend some of the summer dreading it, but then we get to a certain point and the, the energy changes, the vibe changes, football season, full swing. It's, it's fun for it to be here. Yeah. Did you see our new centerpiece? Oh, we have to talk about Dude, this. Oh, look at this, you guys. This is a one of a kind. Satch, our man over at Satchels, brought us this beautiful. <laughs> Dude, there's nothing like Satch art. Thing. <laughs> I'm not. It's awesome. Great centerpiece. Look at this. Got this little. I, he was like, "You are gonna hate this. You're gonna." <laughs> I'm like, "Dude, no, you don't understand. I love it because it's art and it's from you." So that is our new podcast centerpiece, right there. Thanks, Satch, for that. But, um, you know, dude, there's a couple things. There's a couple things I wanted to tell you before we get into our episode today. And I, w- I was really, really, really pumped about this. But you know when we had Basketball Cup yeah. on the podcast, right? So he was on the podcast and we were wrapping up the Rap Spot giveaway. giveaway. We had already done mm-hmm. it, right? And I was talking to, and he, and he was saying that he had entered in but unfortunately didn't win. And I was like, ah, oh, you know, yeah, it's a bummer. Well, uh, one of our listeners, Dryers DKI, heard heard that episode, okay, and reached out to Basketball Cop and paid for their rap. Dude, get out. No. Nah, that is I'm so serious. cool. And it happened because of the podcast and that connection. And so I was pumped. So I just wanted to, I really wanted to give some mad love, one, to Dryers to, to DKI. Dryers, absolutely. That's, a, because, that's awesome. Like, to hear the episode and then to reach out and to like get the rap, um, you know, for Basketball Cop. Because, you know, like, you know, Bobby White, he didn't, he talked about how he didn't like to spend the organizational, you know, organization's money on things like a rap, right. you know, he wants to use it for the basketballs and the and the hoops and the things that they're doing for the kids. He doesn't want to spend it on a rap. So it was really really cool that Dryers DKI did that. So I just wanted to say thank you guys for that. It's really really cool. It's inspiring for me. Sure, I mean know, absolutely. Well, for us, yeah, to hear of the podcast having bridging that kind those of reach, connections. Or, yeah, yeah cool. I don't know. It's, it's just really really cool. So I just wanted to give all those guys mad love because it was it was really really awesome. Uh, Bobby had actually sent me a text saying, "Hey, like Dryers had actually listened to the episode the, the day of, saying they heard the episode. They're thinking about sponsoring this rap for us." And I was like, "Dude, that's awesome!" And and it came through and they did it. Cool. It was awesome. That's really really so, really cool. And uh, before we get into the episode, I want to give I want to tell everybody one more thing because we've been working hard. You know, we've been talking about the episodes, and you know, we we do guys. We spend a lot of money creating this thing, which is, I mean, it's awesome. It's so fun, <laughs> but it is a lot I of I love it. Uh, but we created a new Patreon page, so you can go to patreon.com forward slash W-H-O-A-G-N-V, and you can subscribe to one of our tiers. I mean, I think it's like, it starts at like $5 a mm-hmm. month, get discounts on swag, 
Um, you get some like free swag and yeah, some of Yeah, there's a lot them. of cool things in there. Uh, you have the opportunity in some tiers to like come in and sit in on an episode. Uh, I don't know, there's Which a whole- th- This is the one I'd pick. That's the one? Yeah, if I could pick an episode, it'd be this one. <laughs> but, yeah? Yeah. Uh, you're getting excited. Yeah, I'm, he's I'm ready, he's ready yeah, to get the episode started. But definitely check out our Patreon page. We appreciate y'all's support, because um, we we just couldn't do it without you. I mean, it's uh, it's it's fun. Like, we don't make any money on it, no. right? Zero. And we're just, at this point, we're trying to get to the point where we can at least just cover the cost. And if I can just cover the cost of this thing, I would be on cloud Sure, yeah, yeah. Because, like, for me, it's just a hobby. It's fun. And, and to see the reaction from people in Gainesville and the businesses that are involved in listen, you know, or everybody who listens to the episodes, I, I just get inspired by, I mean, just that, just the connections and, you know, the everything that's happening and that's happened thus far. So anyway, if you're interested, please check us out, patreon.com forward slash whoa GNV and Mike. Dude, I know I'm you, stoked. I, Mike, you guys, Mike is so excited about this episode. I, oh, you're a big foodie, right? You're a big foodie. All right, so let me let me go ahead. Do, let me do, just do, do introduce. Let me do. Let me do our epic introduction. Yep. And let's get this thing rolling, you guys. Today on the show, we have Ken Pang, creator and writer of local area food blog, Ken Eats Gainesville. What is up? Yo. <laughs> what up, man? Dude, we've been trying to make this happen for a little while now, and so I'm like really excited that it's happening. The logistics finally came the together. The logistics right. finally yeah. came together. Dude, welcome to our show, man. Thank you. Appreciate it, man. Thanks for having me. Yeah. How's everything been? Been great, man. Busy. Life yeah. is life, man. Anything I mean, <laughs> Life is good. Yeah. I mean, we're entering the fall semester around yeah. Gainesville. How long have you been in Gainesville? Oh my God! You're gonna make me feel really old right now. Uh, you're welcome. <clears throat> I, moved here, yeah. <laughs> I moved here in 2004. Okay, for school. Uh, I mean, I got you same, beat, man. That's yeah. the same year I was here. Yeah. 2000. 2000. I moved here in 04. 04. Yeah. My man. August of 04. Uh, yeah. So I moved here in 04 and uh, came for school and like found this town to be kind of interesting because it's a shell shock for me, right? Because I moved here from South Florida. Right. I'm from just outside uh, Fort Lauderdale, and it's a total culture shock when you move up here. I mean, Gainesville in 2004, like 2004, was way different than Gainesville in 2019. Yeah, I mean, people think Big we're a small town. town now. I mean, we there was nothing back then, man. There was literally nothing. You know, and it's it's interesting that you say that because you know we started New Scooters for Less in yeah. 2004. Really? And what? Yeah. So March of 2004 is when we started the the company, and I will never forget. Like, I was completely on my own. You know, and I really I had a business partner at the time, but like we, like he and I, had to figure out everything ourselves. Yeah, like there wasn't the, there was, there was the no amount of resources. Yeah, the, the amount <laughs> right. of resources yeah. that were available at that time. Right, and like even even when we talk about entrepreneurship in the city of Gainesville. Sure. Yeah. I mean, we were on our own. Yeah. Like, there was there, uh, like. <laughs> and there it, were just no resources. Now we have all these incubators and yep. accelerators and hubs and like all these different things. And it's such a great place to start a business and get something off the ground. Absolutely. And it's just it's changed dramatically. The, yeah. In the, eco, years. the ecosystem has completely done a one eighty. I mean, it's incredible to see this town grow. I mean, I've been here for long enough. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it's been interesting. All right. So two thousand four. So two thousand four. All right. So let's let's just do this. Let's just like let's, <laughs> let's oh boy let's get in. We're let, going in. Oh, oh, boy. Right. Like, let's. So we like to right, start. We, we do. We do. <clears throat> we like to start with a story. We like yeah. to start with a story, get into your story a little bit. Sure. We have a little surprise coming in just a few minutes. <laughs> you you want to get them ready? Right. Rebecca? She, she's okay, good. Rebecca's she's oh, boy. What, I don't All know right. what's All happening. Right. <laughs> we got a little surprise. We want to we wanna try something. <laughs> <laughs> but but first, like, let's get into your story a little yeah. bit. So school brought you to Gainesville? It did, yeah. Okay. And just tell us your story, how you would tell it, how you got into this food blog and everything else. Yeah. So, uh, you know, obviously I came here for school, ended up getting a pretty good job, I, what I thought was a really good job at the time, um, with a pretty big company, and stuck around Gainesville. And I was there for maybe, gosh, it's hard to think back now, it's all blur, when you're in your 20s. Uh, <laughs> uh, maybe three, a little over three years, and then ended up getting laid off. Uh, was looking for something else to do, like trying to find another job, and I was just bored out of my mind because I'm one of those people that's like, let's go. Like, I'm wired. I sleep like five hours, and I'm good to go. I'm like, let's go. Um, and I was just trying to find something to do, and one of my friends was like, you like food. You're hypercritical and uh, crazy and neurotic. Why don't you write a food blog? And I was like, no, nah, man, nobody cares. Like, <laughs> who the hell wants to listen to what I have to say? Um, <clears throat> so I, I did it anyway. And uh, 
So I called it Ken Yeats Gainesville because when I was in school here, uh, I briefly, for one semester in the summer, I wrote for The Alligator because they had this ad in the avenue and I was like, I can do this. <laughs> so I, I made this little food column uh, at the time just for one semester. I think it was like, it must have been like 2005. And uh, I called it Ken Eats Gainesville because I thought it was funny. And uh, oh, so this was in the alligator. Yeah, it was in okay. the alligator. Yeah, if you find, if you're lucky enough to find an issue from like I don't know, summer of 2005, you'll see it in the avenue. <laughs> okay. I think I only wrote like five things, and then they were like, "You gotta go," because uh, <laughs> I, I had no experience doing it. But uh, anyways, so that's where I called it, and uh, I just started posting stuff on Facebook, and then some somehow one way or another, people found it. And it just spread like wildfire. I mean, like, I think I literally woke up one day and I had jumped from like 50 likes, which is like all my friends, to like 200 something. And then, like, I wrote another thing and then jumped to like 400 something. Oh, but this wasn't for the alligator at this point? No, no, no. This was, this was, uh, gosh, I think I've been doing the blog for like six years now. Okay. So 2013. All right. So you're talking about when you yeah, yeah, started yeah, doing it in 2013. The second, the second, the reborn version. Of Ken Eats Gainesville. Okay, and so where were you? Where were you putting it at? Was it just on a website? Just on or? Facebook. Okay, on Facebook. Yeah, just on Facebook. I didn't have a website at first. Okay. Mm -hmm. it, it just yeah, it <laughs> just, right, it just it. went crazy. Yeah, that was it. I mean, like people ask me. I mean, I, I get people that message me that's like, "Hey, I want to start a food blog. Like, how do I do it?" Or like, you know, I want to start whatever blog, and how do I do it? Okay, so when you were going to, <laughs> when you were going to UF, yeah, what were you majoring in? Uh, I was going to school for business, which is. I work in business now with my day job. I work in finance. Okay. Um, so it's completely unrelated to journalism, unrelated to food. Uh, I keep it separate. And so this, like, it was just really a pa like. Do you just have a passion for food, though? I, yeah, I love. Like it. your friends were just like, you like food. You yeah. should do a block. But I mean, that's just, yeah, right. <laughs> that's it, that's it. Sometimes, sometimes we're done. It's, this was a great yeah. episode. <laughs> sometimes <laughs> it's just that serendipitous, right? It's just that serendipitous that things happen. But no, I, I mean, I grew up around food. My family's been in the food business. Um, you know, I grew up around it. My dad owns Asian supermarkets in South Florida. And so we used to travel a lot all over the country and like, you know, try different foods and we go to like all these Chinese restaurants and you'd like get stuff that you're like, other people would be like, what, what is that? You know, we'd be like trying it. But uh, yeah, it's always been something that I've been into and uh, I'm hypercritical. So I just put two things together and just started sharing my experiences. Um, I don't write, <clears throat> I mean, I don't call myself a food critic or anything like that. I'm just a food blogger because mm. I'm no critic. Like I, I, I don't, I've never worked in the kitchen. Like I'm not, I'm not a chef. You know, like, who am I to rate the food, right? You just like to eat. So, yeah, I like to eat, and <laughs> all okay. I do is share my experience. Okay, so you posted that <clears throat> 2013. Yep. And the first one just got a bunch of likes. Yep. And do, you, do you remember was what it, was? it just a post, it or was, was it uh, like, like, how did you do it, like, on Facebook? It was just a giant rant on Facebook. Okay. And, and, so it, and I, like actually think, I actually think it was a negative review, because Mike was asking me, do I remember which one it was? It was... Um, what was the name of that place that was where if it is now? Uh, it used to be, it was Rhubar. Rhubar closed, and then it oh, became geez. something else. It became uh, uh, the five, uh, <clears throat> or that was a thing for no, a while. No, I think the five came bef after this. Okay, so it, it was, was it was uh, gosh, it was like some steakhouse from Lake City, which okay. as soon as you say that, you're like, oh god, right? <laughs> but <laughs> but uh, no, it was uh, it was that place. I can't remember the name of it for the life of me. I want to say it was called like Cowboys or something like that. Okay. Something stupid. I mean, if you go back to the beginning of my Facebook, you'll see it's still there. Okay. So yeah, I should have looked Cowboys. before I came. But. Okay, but so <laughs> did you set this up as a separate page or was this just on like your personal name? It was a separate page. Okay, yeah. So you created a page. Yeah, it was. And it was called Kenny's Gainesville. That's right. Yeah. And it was the first post on Kenny's Gainesville yep. 2013 Facebook yep. page, talking crap about <laughs> Cowboys or whatever it was. Yeah, called. whatever it was called. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, do you remember what you like uh, said about it? What did you eat? You don't have any idea. I mean, I got steak there. I knew I got that because it was a steakhouse, and it just wasn't that great. But uh, <laughs> it, no, it was. It was. I remember it tasting like leather. Like that's like the one thing I remembered. I don't remember anything else from that. Okay. So at that point, how many? Like, how often were you creating posts? I think like <clears throat> so. As with anything, you start off with you're like super hyper into it. Right. So I think I was like doing a post like every other day or like every three or four days. And it was just like bombarding the page with like all these posts. And it was like good, bad, you know, all this kind of stuff. And uh, initially 
you know, I did what anybody does, like you spam your friends on Facebook and you're like, hey, come like my page. Right. And then uh, and then from there, I guess it's just kind of like social media algorithms did its thing. Like, thanks, Mark Zuckerberg. Like, I appreciate you, man. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it just took off from there. But, uh, you know, I don't know what it was that like people gravitated towards at the beginning. I think it was just like. I don't think there was anybody else at the time in Gainesville, at least, like writing food reviews, or at least like ones that weren't like obviously flub, fluff pieces, mm-hmm. you know, that you were obviously paid for. And so I think like later on, I like I ran into like a, another sh- some chef in town who shall remain nameless, uh, who said to me like, "Who was it? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I can't tell you." <laughs> it's confidential. Uh, no, so he told me that he was initially gravitated towards the blog because he read it and was like, well, holy shit, like this guy actually said something bad about a restaurant. Okay. And so yeah. I think that kind of like got some street cred, you know, yeah. at the beginning. So uh, yeah, it was interesting. Which almost seems like it would be completely different now because like everyone's got an opinion and it's fashionable to, be, yeah, to two, have a bad one. 2013 you know? was a very different political climate <laughs> right. than 2019. I mean, like the stuff that's happening now is like, whoa. For exactly. Sure. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> it's like, whoa. like happening. I don't yeah, know. Yeah. I'll have to tell you guys. But one of the things I found interesting about it, and it's about the same timeline that the blog started getting popular, sure. is the Gainesville food and, and beverage scene, at least in 2004 and, and on up, was very chain heavy. Mm-hmm. Uh, there it still wasn't, is. It, it <clears throat> certainly is in a lot of ways, but I think that there is, and I'd let you comment on it, there's been a little bit of a... I don't want to say a renaissance, but there's a lot more local places popping up now because that's becoming in. The brewery scene has gotten crazy. I'm yeah. actually wearing my uh, stubbies and oh, signs. Yeah. Um, sure, but, Love but, it. But I miss stubbies, a, man. Stubbies is OG, man. Was yeah. that was, let me tell you a quick thing about stubbies. That was my cheers. I mean, that right, was yeah. like, <laughs> that was my education. Yeah, we're the same age, right? We like, are, we're, yeah. yeah. So Gar, like, Gar and Ber- Berkeley Hoffman, they made, yeah. I cut my teeth drinking beer with them. Dude, they were like, great. Like That was my beer education. Like mm-hmm. Everything I know about beer... I owe it to Stubbies, right? And well, let me. I gotta give a little bit of context because we got some people who are listening that have no ideas. <laughs> oh, sorry. What Stubbies sorry. was the, the so OG. Stubbies was right. It was right on University mm-hmm. Avenue, downtown, and it was it's it where really, it is really now. yeah. Madrinas mm-hmm. is there now. Yeah. Where Madrinas is? Yep. And it was it really started off with just that unit, like yeah, just right. that space, Tiny. right? I mean, I remember the first time I went there was like you were packed in there like mm-hmm. sardines man and everyone was happy but they right. had beers from like all over the world everywhere the yeah thing. yeah and, and they had this offender list and you the, yeah. the thing is if you did the list you had to drink a hundred different beers and they kept this paper list in a giant binder there on the bar that's right yeah and and if you did a hundred <laughs> then you got your you got a plaque on the wall and it was a t-shirt pub too they mm-hmm. had all these different t-shirts from around or whatever that were funny sayings all that kind of stuff yep. and you got a free t-shirt you got your name on the wall and then after your first hundred every time you drank another hundred, you, you got a little decoration on there. And yeah. I remember the night I finished my hundredth, uh, Ben, who I'm sure you came across, he was a legend there. Oh yeah, had, yeah. Had his 20th list finished, 2,000 oh beers. Yeah, that dude was <laughs> crazy. impressive. Yeah. yeah. Well, and then they expanded next door. And they expanded That's between right, Stubbies yeah. and Stein. Okay, okay. So there was the German aspect, they got a full German kitchen, brought yeah, cool. potato pancakes, cool all kind of stuff. But yeah. I heard like, from what I understand, Berkeley got like a gluten allergy or something. And yeah, that's the same I heard. Like, yeah, there was a lot of stuff happening at the end there. Yeah, I mean, like Gar, passed, like away, Gar passed away, which is really, really uh, tough on everyone. Right. Yeah. That place was so cool though. And they still they it do was. a food truck now, right? They do pop up. Yeah, she uh, does from a, time, time. Yeah, yeah, she does a pop up from time mm-hmm. to time. Yeah, right. So I, it's still it's always rewarding to go back and see her. And uh, but you know, she doesn't remember me anymore. But I still <laughs> say yeah. I'll wear my shirt to go see her and be like, ah. and now Madrina's is there, which I like Madrina's. Too. Right, and yeah. so that's a cool little spot. So that's what's interesting. Like even just kind of back to the original point. Is, is yeah sorry about that no no worries but <laughs> like in, in 2004 and on like beer, beer culture was just a completely different thing right like it was a, a, a almost like i don't want to say a peasant drink but like like you, you had your cocktails and wine there were snobbery there but beer was just college right but stubbies made it cool and now you have you had, the next thing you had house of beers and you have like five different breweries here yeah. in town and yeah, microbrews yeah. everywhere it's just a trendy thing and and like you said stubbies stubbies was the OG yeah, yeah. stubbies was at the for, definitely at the forefront of the whole craft beer movement um, i think i remember reading a while back you know at the very beginning of it there was like national publications that were talking about stubbies mm-hmm. as one of the des- destinations for beer nerds I mean, it was like super cool. It yeah. was a renowned place, yeah. you know, and uh, it's sad I mean, what ended up happening to it. But, you know, all good things come to an end. Sure. But yeah, you're right. I mean, Gainesville has changed a lot with the food scene. Um, I mean, you look at the stuff that's out there now, 10, 20 years, maybe even five years ago, people wouldn't have taken the chance to mm-hmm. open to some of the stuff that they're doing. 
um, you know, I just heard about a new concept that's coming that's all, you know, Cambodian noodles. And uh, it's like five years ago, people would be like, huh? Right. Like, it's like, is there really what, a market what, what for that? What is that? Yeah. yeah. And now I think people are like starting to see, it's like kind of a, a you know, self-affirming process, right? So like one place opens up, they take the chance and then they do well. And then other people are like, well, I could do that. You know, and then it goes and so forth and so forth. So it's a, it's a slow burn, it's a slow evolution, mm-hmm. but yeah. it's happening. Well, it's, it's interesting too because I feel like a lot of places in the in the chain world, uh, yeah. and and one of them kind of makes me smirk because you joke about them all the time, and now they're actually coming. But Cheesecake, yeah, 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 known for their twenty page menu, sure. But what you see now is outside of the chain world is is people focusing in on a certain niche, a certain market, and just trying to do those few things really well. Yeah, as and, it should be. And, and that's yeah, exactly. Oh. It just just be awesome. At it. so if that's Cambodian noodles, then yeah, yeah. fine. Like that's awesome. Uh, whereas a lot of times people would try to spread themselves way too thin by having something for everybody, and all of it was bland and uninspired. Sure. So yeah, I'm that's, not a critic either. But that's just, that was my own, <laughs> no, my own feeling. Dude, I, I, I absolutely agree with you. Like I know that he's not a critic, but I was, you know, as we were preparing for this episode, I'm like, hey Ken, I was like, is there anything that you've been wanting to kind of like try that you can like try <laughs> like can, that you can like try while we're on the episode so we can like have you like tell us about like whether, whether you not really like it like live on the episode. <laughs> but he's like, no man. He's like, no man. I've I've had everything. Yeah. Just like, of course you have. He's a sucker for the, <laughs> the tripes and the you know it, the it's, fun things. It's just it's not that there's nothing right now. Well, it is that because there's nothing right now, but that's because Gainesville kind of is interesting in that restaurants open in waves. You know, like there'll yeah. be like a couple months where it's just like this place open, this place open, this place open, and then it's like three or four months of just barren nothing. Mm-hmm. So like we're in one of those times right now, <laughs> and so when I, I didn't know what to tell you, <laughs> it's all really, good. Yeah. It's all good. So, when did things like really start to kind of take off? Because I mean, so you were posting, yeah, right. You're doing this every other day or so, posting new things. People are starting to like. When did you? When were you like? Oh man, like I'm on to something. Like this is this is really resonating. I mean, I don't remember exactly the timeline timeline wise, but I think like as soon as I hit like a thousand followers on Facebook, I was like, okay. Like people actually care. Care what you think. Like yeah. I should probably care more. <laughs> you so what has, what has your page grown to? Do you know? Uh, the what, the Facebook page. Yeah. Uh, I think it's something, maybe okay. over twenty two thousand. Dang. Oof. Yeah. That's cool. <laughs> and then the Instagram is at almost. 12, and did you separate 000. the blog like to a what like to a website? Yeah, there's an actual website as well. It's just kennysgainesville.com. Right. So when did you um, like make that transition? Because it was on Facebook for a yeah, while. Yeah. You made the transition to a blog, yeah. like on a website. I when, think, when did that happen? I think it was like 2015, a couple okay, years a couple into years. it. Okay. Yeah. At, you know, at, at first I was just like, I'm just going to make it on post on Facebook. And then I started getting people saying, well, uh, did you review this place? Like, did you review? Because like, you know, it fell back into the timeline. They couldn't see it. And I was like. Oh, I should probably do something about that. So, uh, you know, I, I launched the website. Okay. And then, uh, you know, on the website, I'm able to do some more fun stuff, like a, like a what's coming calendar. Um, I'm able to do, like, the whole archive of, like, all the reviews. And then, like, also, I did a map for a while of, like, the places that I liked. And then it was, like, you click on this little blob, and it's, like, a thumbs up or a thumbs down. <laughs> But like, I just, I was like, oh, this is too much to maintain. Like, but, I so, but don't you worry about, I mean, from a Gainesville business perspective, yeah. I mean, you are affecting the fact, like you give something a thumbs down, like you have a lot of influence now, right? Like a lot of people are like, Ken doesn't like it. Hey man. I'm not going. So, I mean, but, the, but the argument I make is that like, I never, I mean, I, I wouldn't say never. I, very, very rarely have I said like, "Don't go here." <laughs> but uh, I mean, I, I just share my experience. Yeah. And whether or not you want to go is entirely up to you, right? Like that's why I don't believe in like star ratings or like you know like one to five ratings or whatever. I feel like that's so arbitrary because yeah. so, there's like some psychology involved, right? Because like if you're going to a restaurant, like if you're like going to like Atlanta or something, mm-hmm. and you Google like where do I where do I go eat? and you pull up like your Google list, your re- results, you're gonna like pick the stuff that's like 4.5 stars or five or whatever. You're not even gonna bother reading like the two or the three or whatever. You're not bothered, but like that's like wrong because you don't, you wanna see like why people are giving it that, right? Mm-hmm. And then you make up your own mind. So that's why I don't like do any sort of uh, like ratings or anything like that. I want people to actually read and make up their own mind because I'm just sharing my experience. You may not agree with me, 
And if you don't agree with me, you can still go, and no one's telling you not to go. Yeah. You know, there's people that get real right up, riled up about it. It's like, oh, I can't believe you said this. It's like, cool, you can still go. And I don't think, I don't believe that I've ever been directly involved, like, responsible for closing any restaurants. <laughs> I feel like, I feel like if there's something, if, 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 if there's something that's so bad, like such a bad experience that I shared, like, I feel like there's more holes right. in that ship than just the oh, one that sure. I poked and in And I there. can think of a specific, uh, we'll say group that got really angry about a, a review that you wrote one time. Oh yeah. 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 You know what I'm talking about. Are they out of business? You're talking about the chef that threatened to punch me in the face. Yeah. 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 I was going to let you tell however much you wanted of it, but yeah. I mean, I'll tell the whole yeah. story. Tell the whole, <laughs> I don't, I do this not This is why we are here. You we never, are here you are never apologetic about moment. it at all. I, I don't, I own my opinion. That's, mm-hmm. that's the thing. Like, the, you know, people are like, well, why do you show your face? It's like, but I you, own my opinion. But that's why you win because the authenticity, dude, people, people, a connect, you know, we talk about personal branding all the time. People connect with the authenticity. When you're real, you're real. Absolutely. So, like, that's why you win. So, okay, so, yeah, tell us this whole crazy story. <laughs> Should I, like, give restaurant names? Yeah. Are you guys concerned about this? I'm not. No, hell no, I'm not concerned. <laughs> uh, I mean, I know who it is, but. <laughs> I mean, uh, okay, so I, I wrote a review about Oak. And uh, they're, as you know, were owned by the 101 group who had, you know, 101 Cantina, Cantina 101 downtown, downtown, all this stuff. Let's just say they're not exactly the most like upstanding citizens, you know. I can go into that, but I'm not going to. Um, wrote a review about the food because it frankly was not good. Um, I, I don't think they even had a real like chef at the time. They had no, they did have a chef. I, I take that back. But the food, you know, mostly was just like prepared foods, and they had like a tons of tons of issues. Um, I went there, wrote a review about it, and people, I think people agreed with me mostly. And then like a few weeks, it must have been like a few weeks or months later, they had they had changed chefs already and all this. Oh no, sorry. They did not have a chef at the time. Sorry, I'm getting this all mixed up. They did not have a chef at the time. And then a few months later, they did hire a chef. And then that's when I ran into him and a couple of the managers at Dragonfly when I was out at the bar one night. And I was with someone and uh, out of the corner of my eye, I keep seeing this dude just like glaring at me, like glaring, like mean mugging me. And I was like, okay, what is happening here? And I whispered to my friend, I was like, hey, uh, dude, homeboy next to you is like really mean mugging me. And she looked over and she was like, oh yeah, he like hates you. Oh no. And uh, I was like, huh, let me see about this. So I was like, hey man, is there a problem? And he was like, you know what the problem is. And I was like, uh, no, I don't. Like, <laughs> can you enlighten me? And I was like, who are you? And he's like, it doesn't matter who I am. And I was like, uh, okay. So the bartender comes over, and I, I kind of had an inkling of who it was, because I recognized one of the guys. And uh, I was like, hey man, like, is that the dude from Oak? And the bartender was like, yeah, that was him. So I was like, okay. So then I tried to take a picture of him and all this stuff. And he, at some point, he was like, uh, it's taken every ounce of me right now to not punch you in the face. And I was like. But this was while you were there? Yeah. Oh, dang. Yeah. And my friend had to get involved, she was like, to chill like we're just out here trying to have a good time you're having a good time like just relax anyways I took a picture of him ended up making a post about it because I had to tell the story and uh, post blew up the owner of the place caught wind of it he lives in Miami drove up made the guy apologize to me and then shortly thereafter he got fired and then so I was like alright let's run this course so I took the post down and that was that but that was like an insane situation. I mean, that was like one of the only, a couple times where like a restaurant owner had confronted me. Mm. And especially a guy that, first of all, he wasn't even there. He wasn't even the chef there when I tried the restaurant. He wasn't hired yet. So he could have easily been like, hey man, like I'm the chef there now. Right, come back and give us a shot. I'd know? love to, for you to come back and try my food. And I would have been like, cool man, I'd love to do that because it was terrible before. <laughs> you know, instead he's like, oh, I'm taking every ounce of me to not punch you in the face. I was like, all right, man. That's the card you want to play. That's cool. Yeah. So that was. I think that's. Was that what, what you were referring yeah, oh, to? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. One hundred percent. Yeah. I, yeah. I, Thanks funny. for making the yeah. podcast go so dark, there, Michael. Hey, yeah. right on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he gives he gives me crap all the time because after, after we'll get done recording and we'll do a, like a little recap and I'm like, oh, I kind of wish I would have asked this. He's like, why didn't you? Well, this yeah, is the time it, I finally did. Hey, like, Ask away. Right. You know, I think transparency wins. 
and like I mean I'm not tr- I don't want to hurt any any business and you know, I, I mm. like I love Gain like Gainesville is my home I love it but like I you know I want to be I want to be real I want to talk you know it's it's funny because one of the things that I reflect back on when you know we had Kristen Coffee on that episode on her episode right and I asked her she was talking about Instagram she was talking you know we're talking to influencer marketing I said hey do you mind telling us like how much you're going to make on mm-hmm. Instagram and I wasn't sure if she'd be comfortable telling me her financials right and she said I'm gonna make between 80 and a hundred thousand dollars on Instagram this year wow and and then like just a few weeks ago she like she messaged me saying that she had a few, ar- a she few had weeks already re- yeah. yeah a few weeks later she had already reached that and and I was like, dude, that tra- you know, so many people commented to me about that episode because it was transparent. And she like she was real. Mm, yeah, she told it like it was, and and a lot of people like appreciated knowing that information. I'm like, I'm like, dude, I'm gonna let people be as transparent as they want to be, and if they don't want to be, that's like that's fine. I'm not pushing anybody, but but I know, but I think you know, being I don't know, I just transparent I think that's why the yeah. podcast is doing really well is because people are being transparent about things the reality of this though that's it, the it's, point it's still all how you react to it like we live in a culture now where negative reviews out outnumber <laughs> positive reviews 10x right. because of it's course. much easier to sit by and be a keyboard warrior right well people want to watch the train wreck right? exactly but I have to respond to them all the time we get them and, and a lot of times they're miscommunications or misunderstandings but it's just like okay that's an opportunity to, to show who you are like sure. and to, to get better whether it's food or whether it's anything yeah, it's yeah. like okay like what didn't you like like let me let me improve upon this rather than getting frankly butthurt about yeah, it yeah yeah you know? and, and I've had people react that way and it's been like awesome mm-hmm. you know they'll reach out and say hey like I know you didn't like this um, you know, we'd love to try and improve. Like, would you share your thoughts? And like, I mean, I've gone to restaurants before and like given them like feedback, like just, I mean, not that I'm anybody, but like, mm-hmm. you know, it's like they value my feedback and that's like nice to see from restaurants sometimes, you know, from any business really. So when did it really click with you where you were like, oh man, I like really have, I really have influence. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's gotta be a weird a shift, you right? Know, like you, you start doing this. It's kind of a fun thing. Yeah, yeah. You're, you're telling people about your experiences, but now you're legit like influencing whether or not people go places. It's crazy to me, man. Like it still has not really set in for me. Like I still sometimes like I get messages from people and they're like, "Oh man, I love what you do." Like I won't go to a place unless like you say you like it. And I'm like, "Whoa!" Like don't do that. <laughs> you know, it's like. <laughs> Like make up your own mind, you know. Like just because I say something about it, it's just me sharing my experience. But I don't know, man. I, I honestly like it. Really, still has not set in for me. I've been doing it for six freaking years, six years, and I'm just like, wow, people actually care what I have to say. It's a nice feeling. Yeah. But um, I do don't people know. leave you alone when you go out? Do they leave? Yeah. You alone? I mean, I, I got to feel like at a, a certain point, you've, you're probably well recognized. I mean, yeah. I've seen you several times, and you wouldn't know me from anything until today i mean it happens but, yeah like you know i've got I mean, that's but when sometimes it gets a little weird like people like are like can i get your autograph like i've had <laughs> right. actually gotten that before and i'm just like why do you want my autograph like that's not gonna be worth anything <laughs> throw that in the garbage right but uh uh yeah it's I me mean, it's cool like you know if people want to come up and say hi like i get that quite often actually um you know i'll chat with them and be nice and i appreciate it you know it's awesome so are you ever in a restaurant and somebody comes up to you and when you're in a restaurant they're like what do you really think about this place Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, and, I, and I'll tell them. Right. I'm not shy about it. You know, it's like it's good, or like, eh, I don't like it. <laughs> and usually they'll be like, yeah, I agree, and then just walk away. And that's that. You know, that's it. Yeah, it's it, it's it's funny. I love it. <laughs> All right, so we had we wanted to do a little a little thing. Oh boy, because so I, for everybody who's listening, I was like, you know, there's something behind me. <laughs> it's coming. It's coming. Hold on. So I was like, you know. I'm like, I'm like, Ken, what do you want to drink? We're doing a nighttime episode. You want, you want some wine? You want some liquor? Like, what do you like? He's like, I knew it. He's like, it's I'll a taste have, test. He's like, I'll have some. He's like, I'll have some cold brew. Oh, and I'm boy. like, all right, my man, we will get you some cold brew. Will you take it around that way and put it right over there next to him? Because these guys side. are gonna get so pissed at me if I like yeah, identify so, the wrong so, one. So let me explain what we've done here. This is a little entertainment value for all of our listeners. We have three cups of cold brew from different businesses around town. They're did all you, local? Did you write them on the bottom? Okay, um, I'm not gonna tell you. These are all local? Uh, a couple, yeah. <laughs> all of them are local, okay. I mean, like, uh, okay. All right, so, so this, is what, this is what we're gonna do. 
you get like taste it and i want to see if you can tell us which one's which which one's which yeah oh boy all right right, so he's drinking number one okay do you want to try them all first or like no no tell do do you know where that one's from it's not brio okay it's not brio This is so much fun for me. I don't know why. <laughs> it's also not Opus. Oh, day okay. Who is it? I don't know. You don't Who's... know. Okay, Hold I'll on. tell you. It's not a necessarily a local coffee brand. God damn it, man! <laughs> uh, <laughs> but you're right. It wasn't Opus, and it wasn't Brio. So, are you doing that based off familiarity, or do you taste certain notes? Or <laughs> the there's certain things I'm, I'm used to, like certain <laughs> pro- so f- flavor I'm profiles. Sorry. But uh, I have no idea what this is. Because I don't, like, honestly, I don't, like, the only cold brew I drink are either Opus or Brio. Okay. So. That's fair. That's Starbucks. Oh. <laughs> I was going to say, it tastes like shit, but <laughs> that makes sense now. Okay, okay, so. All right. All right, next. Okay. Which one should I go for? It doesn't matter. I got, I was going to say, palette, palette, yeah, palette, palette, yeah. palette. Okay. This is great because, because James over here can see, can see we, wrote, the we wrote the bottom, so we know. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, so we can know what you're, what you're drinking. Okay. He's taking a sip. Yeah, it tastes different because they're not as cold. Oh man, we had them in the so, fridge. Hold on. Oh no. Maybe the paper is leaching. <laughs> come on, come on. I gotta taste them back to back. Okay. Don't mess this up. <laughs> this is so much pressure, man. Oh, this is this is what I love, man. This is our show. We get to put all the pressure on. I'll do that one more time. Let's see. Get right here. Yep. For the gram. For the gram. <laughs> <laughs> All right, who is it? Oh, God. If I had to guess, I would say this is Opus and this is Brio. Boom! Yeah. We got it! <laughs> hey, dude, that's awesome. I'm impressed. <laughs> now I'm going to drink all of it. Oh, that's great. Okay. Yeah, we have more. Oh, I'm it's ta- good. I won't be able to, I won't be, I won't be able to yeah, sleep We got to sleep at some point, right? <laughs> I'm tagging both of them in this Instagram post real quick. This is See, the, the thing is, they're both good. They just have yeah. very distinct flavors, and I love them. Awesome. I'm glad I did not fail. Yeah. That's <laughs> Street cred intact. Right, you kept it. Yeah, that was awesome, man. I'm actually really impressed. Cool. Well, that, that went exactly as... I mean, I, was, I wasn't sure if he would get them right, but I was like, yeah, this will I was be, a little nervous there. I was like, oh, if I get this you? wrong, Where yeah. Yeah. I won't hear the end of it from either one of them. All right, so, uh, so I want to tell you about something that I did a long time ago. I actually wrote a blog about oh about ranch dressing oh, in Gainesville. God. Okay, I'm a, I, I love I love ranch dressing. I'm just a ranch fan. I feel so, like we talked about this at we? some point. Did we? I don't know. Maybe. How do you feel about ranch dressing? Do you like ranch? I mean, I guess. Do you ever? First of all, do you ever eat it? No. Okay. You don't. <laughs> okay. So yeah, this I'm, is not. I'm not a condiment guy. Okay, so like, this is you, like if I asked you who has the best ranch dressing in, Ga- in Gainesville, you're not going to be able to tell me, and I'm not going to be able to see if it's matched up with mine. I mean, does can I just say it? Like, yeah. I mean, I don't know if this qualifies as ranch dressing, but that that garlic cream sauce that they give you at the top is bomb. Yeah, that's actually number one on my list. Is that considered yeah. ranch? Though? Yeah, but it's garlic ranch. But yes, it's so delicious. Oh, well, there man. you go. The yeah, it is delicious. Dip it in the corn. Yeah, nuggets. absolutely. Oh, gosh, the best. <laughs> I love it. Okay, cool. Two I'm for two. Good. Yeah, two for two, right? <laughs> he's Damn, killing, all right. He's killing it, man. <laughs> he's killing keep it. Going. I feel good. I feel good. Let's keep it rolling. Right, he did cool. write an entire vlog about this. I yeah, it, it, it was. It's it was probably right. the most read thing you've ever. How, <laughs> probably, which is so sad. I, I never heard about how much rent. So, oh yeah, how much ranch dressing did you try? A lot. I went. Or, like I have a passion for ranch dressing. I can tell you right now that he like, thinks he invented putting ranch I, dressing on pizza. Yes, I did. Are you kidding me? <laughs> I was the first person ever in the world to do that. No, man. Uh, Come on. Dude, pie, like, I love Come Paisano's on. Ranch. I think they have great ranch. And and actually, I'm not kidding. Like, I think Wingstop, the franchise Wingstop, has incredible ranch. Interesting. Yeah. I it's, have not uh, sampled any of this. Yeah. <laughs> you know the, well, I'm curious now. You know the Cool Ranch Doritos? That's do the I best eat ranch. Them? No, I mean, do, you, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know what they call them overseas? What? Cool American. <laughs> I'm not making that. I up. really think we're the only country that like regularly consumes ranch dressing and absolutely loves it. Right. Hey, 
It's a thing, man. It's Blood like ranch. people that like you know I'm I'm on a diet diet and so they go to Zaxby's and they get a chicken tender salad and they drench it with like <laughs> ranch dressing. They're like, oh, what do you mean? I mean like a salad. And I'm like, no, man, you're eating right. freaking fried chicken with like fat poured all over it. Yeah, but you're definitely getting all those fat soluble vitamins in your salad. Yeah, somehow. yeah. <laughs> you should bring back that that blog. I'd be interested to see that. <laughs> it was like the only one that I've done that. Like, <laughs> but hey, I, I mean it's out there somewhere. Go look it up, yeah. somebody. I'll look it up. I'll have to Google yeah. like Colin Austin Ranch Dressing <laughs> blog. It probably won't show Colin, up anywhere. Colin Austin Ranch Dressing. I don't even know dressing. what that was. Probably Medium. It was Medium. It was on yeah. Medium. Yeah. Medium. Yeah. Is that a, that's a blog. Is that site. a thing in there? Oh, I don't know. What that is, that is that thing? I don't know. I'll be it's honest just, with it's you. A host. I, I, I'm I'm the worst blogger in the entire world. Yeah. I have never read another food blog in my life. I, hey. So I was going to ask about <laughs> that. Like, it, I mean the Bourdain's out there and the people like yeah. that. I mean, do you watch them? Do you, do you find yourself, I mean, I know you don't consider yourself a food critic, but do you find yourself honing in on certain kind of things? Like, I know we've talked about your taste in food, but but from a dining experience, the ambiance, the deck, the core, every, that all plays into it. And and you don't go super in depth with that whenever, whenever I read your reviews, but you do touch on it from time to time. Yeah, so sure. like, do you ever do any research to kind of hone, I, I don't wanna say hone your opinion, but you know, like to, to have one, have an opinion, you know, yeah, like, yeah. or do you, or like do you the, just rely the, on your authenticity? The, and the basis of my opinion, you're, mm-hmm. you're asking? Sure. Uh, well, so as far as the food goes and like the flavor profiles, like I'm Cantonese and I was brought up like eating tons of Cantonese food. And if you guys know anything about Cantonese food, it's very balanced, right? Like, so the whole philosophy of the food is like, you want to be able to taste every single ingredient, like not have like flavors masking one another. And everything's like there be, with purpose. It has to be fresh, it has to have purpose, and it's all there, and, and like working together to create this like beautiful product. And so when I try food and eat food, like that's kind of what I look for, which is why I was saying I'm not a condiments guy, because it kills me when people get like something, you know, like some beautiful dish, and you want to be able to taste everything, and then they just like, mm. ranch dressing. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh... Burn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry, Colin. I'm out. So uh, <laughs> I will not be invited back to the show. Uh, um, it's the Ken and Mike show on the yeah. WHO and podcast. Hey, you want to switch places? <laughs> yeah, we're, we're bonded. Uh, no, uh, but, uh, you know, so that's kind of the basis for the food. As far as, like, the ambiance and stuff goes, I just kind of share, like, what I think is notable, right? So, like, if a place has, like, something real quirky about it or, like, it has a very interesting ambiance or, like, it's an exceptionally nice ambiance because, mm-hmm. like, I guess my basis of opinion has been formed from going to like tons of different restaurants all over the country. Um, especially in recent years, I've been able to, I've been lucky enough to travel a lot for work for my day job. Um, and whenever I go to these places, I always seek out like what's the best place out there, you know, and just kind of like getting a gauge for like where the culinary scene is right now, like what kind of new concepts are popping up. And so like, that's the kind of the basis I'm forming. I guess it's my own experiences and not so much like TV shows or like other blogs. Right. Cause I honestly like, I mean, I watch, I've watched a lot of Bourdain, but it's more for the stories. Cause like, I, I wasn't really a fan of his earlier stuff with like, um, what was that show? Um, no, reservations. no Reservations. Yeah, mm-hmm. all right, that stuff, it was it was okay. Like, it was just kind of like going around eating stuff, but like his Parts Unknown series was fantastic. Yeah, phenomenal. Um, and it was more about the people and their stories than the actual food itself, which is what I was really into. Uh, same with that Chef's Table show on Netflix, mm-hmm. which is really more about the person well, and, the and that's just like a, an artistic uh, yeah sensory yeah and exactly and I really like hearing about the stories like mm. how these people kind of like created their brand and created like became what they became it's mm. really interesting to me I'm more into that but um, so yeah I don't I don't know. So when you travel, is that like a, it's a true vacation because you don't feel like you have to write about food in Atlanta or food anywhere because you only eat Gainesville. <laughs> Yes and no. I posted on my on my Instagram. Okay. And uh, I'm just so neurotic that like whenever I go to a place, I'll like schedule out my entire trip and I'll be like, this is like bam, 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 bam. These are all the places I want to hit. And then I'll just post about it on Instagram. So when you do know you're going to write a review for somewhere, I, mean, yeah. I assume that that's, that's a mentality. Like, you know you're going to this restaurant tonight yeah, yeah. And, you're, and you're reviewing it. Sure. Um, walk, walk me through that. I mean, do you, I know sometimes you go with friends. Uh, I usually try to go with friends, yeah. Um, Sometimes you have takes from people with specific diets, uh, vegan, vegetarian, gluten, whatever, and you you write on those if they're there. So so walk me through, like, you know, you know you're reviewing a restaurant tonight. What do you, what do you eat before? Do you, I mean, cause you, you eat a lot when you get there cause you want to try a lot of things. Yeah. So my strategy kind of, um, is to, I usually try to go with at least like two or three friends. Um, and it's completely unannounced. Like I want to say that right now, like there's people that think that like I announce when I go into a restaurant. And so I get like special treatment. Mm-hmm. I mean, literally, I would say like 90% of the time I go into a new restaurant 
they don't know who I am or at least like they act like they don't. Um, and, and, you know, I pay for all my meals and everything like that. No, nothing's like paid for. Mm. Um, so I'll go in there with like two or three friends and we'll kind of like look through the menu, see like what's interesting. And we'll talk to the server and say like, what is your most popular dish? Or like, what do you guys specialize in? And so we'll generally order like a, a spread. Um, and then I'll be able to sample like a little bit of each thing. Cause like I am fat, but I am not that fat. And I would not <laughs> be able to eat like, you know, more than like two things, you know? Um, so I'll sample like a little bit of everything. We'll all kind of share our thoughts. And like, luckily I have like a group, a group of really close friends that like, whose palates I trust. Like mm. they're all like pretty good with that. Um, and they've been around me enough to know like what, <laughs> what I'm about and like what I like and what I don't like. Um, so I'll get their opinions as well. So like, meanwhile, I'm just like on my phone, jotting down notes and taking pictures and whatnot. Like I don't carry like pen and paper with me or anything like that. It's very informal. So I'll just make all these notes, um, take all these pictures and then I'll just go home afterwards. And then I'll, you know, I'll make a little collage of the photos. And then whenever I feel like it, usually it's like 11 o'clock at night when I'm like really tired and just start writing. That's why sometimes you see typos and you're just like, oh shit, <laughs> fix it. But uh, that's usually when I write them. Um, but yeah, the process is very informal. Uh, people think that I go in there with like a friggin' like Rubik, uh, like a curric, like a uh, what am I looking like for? A criteria? Yeah, 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 criteria rubric yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So like they think I go in there and like you know I give this a four. The presentation is blah blah blah. It's like no man, it's not like that at all. It's not it's not like a pretentious process. It's just okay, cool, this tastes good, or like, I like this, or this is interesting, or like, you know, the place is cool, and then they'll comment on the service, like if there's something exceptionally bad or exceptionally good, like, you know, we'll talk about it. And then there's people that also think I go into places like, like ready to pounce, like ready to like bash them. It's like, dude, I don't go into a place wanting to give them a bad review. Like, I have preconceived notions, because how can you not? Like, you get people messaging you going like, have you been here? Have you been here? Have you been here? And they all want to share their opinions with you. And you're like, cool, I'll take that into consideration. Well, I think that really, uh, a perfect example of that, of that was the last one you did. Yeah. Because uh, there was a lot of, just from reading, like you said, preconceived notions. You're talking about, about uh, the fondue. Uh, yeah, yeah, Nine Spices. Nine Spices, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. You had talked about, um, and tell me if I'm wrong, I'm just kind of recalling this, uh, the the concept being a little oddball, but but people were really kind of raving about it. Yeah, yeah. It seemed like you were a little cautious about it, and then you finally went and gave it a shot. Yeah, so that's one. Uh, that's a good example because I had pre preconceived notions about the place because um, so many people were talking about it, and then I heard about like bits and pieces of like what the concept was and like what you do, and in my head I was like, this sounds like cheap Chinese buffet, and I am not down with that. Mm -hmm. And so I kind of had my reservations about going. And one of my friends, uh, Alex, my friends Alex and Niall will tell you that I had my reservations about going even that night. And my friend Alex was like, dude, you got to go. You got to go. Like, he's super into it. And I was like, all right. So he had already been. Yeah, he'd been many okay. times. Yeah. And so he was like, you got to go. You got to go. And I was like, OK, I'll go. So ended up going. And then, like, I really I ended up having a really good time. And, you know, and it's, it's one of those situations where, like, people think that I'm like going to go into a place like bashing it and stuff. But like, that was a pretty good example where I was like having low expectations and actually ended up really enjoying myself. But then I talked about like my concerns as well. The conveyor belt. <laughs> yeah. The conveyor. I mean, come on, man. That's a little gross. Like, uh, did you hear about this? Uh -uh. So it's, he, he's not as loyal of a fan as I am. I, yeah, I'm not. I can like, tell Mike knows his he, stuff. He man. does. He does. I'm not a huge foodie. I go to like one place in town that I absolutely love. Uh, What's that? Uh, I love the top. The top. Oh yeah, yeah. Like, I mean, like that's the I quintessential the Gainesville restaurant. Yeah, I, I I love it. Like if if I'm going out, like I want to. But I'll be honest, and we'll get back to y'all's yeah, conversation. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> to y'all's conversation. My, <laughs> I'm just I'm just here. He's just a fly I'm just on here the wall. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, <laughs> but my wife and I have started doing this thing that I absolutely love, which is we will we will take an Uber from our house to downtown. And we will go. We'll go get drinks at like Madrid. Like we'll go. Yeah, yeah. We'll we'll just bounce around. We'll go to like five different places. Get drinks. Get drinks and an appetizer. Get get uh, entree somewhere else. Get dessert somewhere else, and then get drinks again. We'll hit like five places all in one night, and it's been great. We've done that a couple times this summer. It's a lot easier in the summer when there's no students here, right? Uh, and and we absolutely love it because we go to five different places and have a great time just kind of walk. And you can do that in games. Well, you yeah, can that's, walk, I was you can walk say, around downtown. That, that's the beauty. Awesome. That's the beauty of having such like an intimate downtown, right? Yeah. Like it's really only like what, like four or five square blocks or mm -hmm. maybe more than that. But 
I mean, everything's really walkable. Yeah. It's and awesome. so I'm with you there because, like, you know, if I'm going out, which I rarely do anymore, I used to go out hard. But uh, I mean, <laughs> you know, if I'm going downtown, it's like you hit this place, you hit this place, you hit this place, and you're out. Yep. And it, it makes it possible. It's great. Yeah. So like last time, I think I'm gonna try to recall this. Right. We mm-hmm. went to Madrina's first. Then we went to the top for drinks and appetizer. Then where did you, we go? You hit for? downtown wine and cheese, didn't you? That was at the end. That was the last okay. stop. Um, where did we hit? I'm trying to think. Of, I know. I, I'm like, relying on I, my I looking at your Instagram. I know his Instagram is so much better than yours. I mean, like. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Damn. Between the ranch dressing comment and that, I don't know Colin's like a little hurt well, right it's now. It's probably, he it's trolls pro- me all the I, I time. I do, I troll all, all day, the time, so I probably deserve all of this. <laughs> it's fine. But uh, but no, I definitely enjoy doing that. Okay, so back to y'all's conversation. Oh yeah, I don't even, uh, yeah, what were I'm we out. talking about? <laughs> what was it? Oh, we're oh, yeah, talking yeah, about yeah, conveyor yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. So you didn't hear about this? No, I didn't. So uh, the, you know, the concept is is uh, yeah. Thanks. I didn't get his name. James. James. That's James. 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 Thanks, brother. We're glad you're here. Uh, <laughs> thanks, buddy. MVP. Um, so the concept is uh, you cook your food at your table. Like they give you like a boiling hot bowl of broth, and every every seat has like its own burner. Okay. I mean, they give you this giant like cauldron of like boiling liquid, and you're just like cooking raw meats and vegetables in it. And like you're making your own sauce, it's real fun actually. So like, they have a sauce station too. So like, there's like twenty something sauces, and you get to like mix them all up and like make creations. It could be good, could be bad, depending on your skill level. Um, but it's re- really fun. But part of it is they have this conveyor belt. It looks like an airport luggage like conveyor belt, you know. <laughs> but it's like mini. It's like I don't know. It's like there's maybe, a really great picture yeah, it's on, like, on the web. On yeah, the if Facebook you can pull here. it up. Yeah. Um, um, on Ken's website. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I mean, that's, oh, it's okay. small because it's in the oh, yeah, yeah. That's his head oh, right by the conveyor belt. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So the thing is, they have all he these raw. So concerned in that picture. I am. Yeah. I am He's extremely. I am extremely concerned because it's all uncovered dishes of raw meat and vegetables whizzing by you, like literally, like ear level, like inches away from your head. So, like, you know, if you're coughing or sneezing or like you have an itch on your head, it's like, mmm, I love your dandruff steak. Like, that sounds great, you know? I, I am not about that life. So, uh, luckily, they let you order from this the- This might w- be that one uh, Gainesville podcast, you know, WHOA podcast that I apologize yeah, a lot for. Yeah, people, people are gonna get mad. I am sorry. Uh, yeah, um, I'm, but, I'm apologizing now as well, just in case. <laughs> But it, we, we talked about it. It's all how you take the feedback. Like, yeah, I mean, it's not that hard to get a dome. It's nothing I haven't already said right, elsewhere. So right, right. It's, it's all right. Okay. Um, don't worry about it. All right. Uh, but uh, yeah. Anyways, luckily they let you order directly from the from the server and and you know skip the uh, the sanitation concern with the conveyor belt. Um, so that's what I did the entire time, uh, and it was good. I mean. I can't hate on it. It's just mm-hmm. there's a couple little things that I would like them to change. They also don't give you like dedicated utensils when they give you like the the plate of raw meat. And so I was like, uh, can I just get like extra chopsticks because I kind of don't want my chopsticks that I'm eating with like handling like raw chicken and like raw pork. I'm not mm-hmm. about that life either. Gotcha. So um, it's just like two little things that they need to like correct. I feel like, and it's like. I feel like that's not really up for debate. It's like a pretty obviously like a sanitation concern. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I, the Gainesville Sun's probably gonna like post something at some point like violation, blah, 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 <laughs> which is all they're good for. So anyways. I won't go there either. <laughs> I just went there, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, you're good. I'll let you do it. Yeah, <laughs> I, I'll leave it at that. Um, but anyways, uh, so yeah, that was, that was the, the most recent one. It was an interesting experience. So on a scale of one to five, <laughs> just kidding. I'm just kidding. Because he said yeah, he doesn't do that. It. <laughs> he says, he says, I don't no do one No comment. Uh, just playing. It's so arbitrary, man. Like, every, someone's four is not somebody else's uh, four. And then you, like, you read, like, the Google reviews, like, somebody giving it one star. And it's like, the drink wasn't cold enough. Or, like, they didn't have enough ice. Or they didn't have the right type of ice. One star. It's right. like, dude, chill. <laughs> So I love like, that you say that. Like, what is your most unpopular opinion in terms of a restaurant that you love that the crowd doesn't seem to like? Oh, that they're man. like, why do you like this so much? I've been there and it's okay. Yeah. Um, gosh, I'm trying to think. Like, I talk about a lot of restaurants, but in my regular rotation, I really only have like a handful of places I go to. Mm-hmm. Uh, what's the, hmm. 
I'll have to. I'll get back so to you on that. I'll, I'll think about I'll, that. I'll, I'll, g- I'll give you one, uh, just out of curiosity, because one of the things I, I go to your website most often for, I like to read the news and, and I like to see the best of. Yeah, uh, yeah. And I always find it interesting the way you do the best of, because you do the best restaurant by by money. You have a like a lower dollar one and a, and a more expensive one. Sure, yeah. I think if I recall, Dragonfly and uh, Crane. Crane, yeah. Or um, but for best burger, you do it sit down and and diner. Yeah, there is a difference there. Yeah, there is. Uh, but so you used to have Lucy's, I think, as one of your best burgers. But then you changed yeah. that to Pub in general. Yeah. And so Lee, uh, Lee Clark, our chief of wisdom here at New Scooters for the last long time, he's also a wannabe food critic. Um, <laughs> but one day we were trying to find something to do for lunch and I was like, Ken, Ken Ping says that P&G has the best burger, six bucks, we gotta go check it out. Yeah. And he loved the fries because he's a big fan of hand cut fries, not a fan of the burger. Really? Um, I, I'm vegetarian, I have been for seven years, so I didn't get to have the burger, but, but he was like, Nah, you know what was his uh, on it. what was his critique? He thought it was bland. Now, now his favorite burger is the uh, you can speak to the cowboy the killer cowboy burger at Crafty Bastards. Bastards. Mm. That's his favorite. Burger. I don't know if you've had it. Mm-mm. Oh, it's uh, so good, dude. That but burger. He's, he's also the type of person, and and I kid him about this. That, like I kid Colin all the time. Like outside the top, he likes to only go to chain restaurants. I kid, <laughs> I kid Lee because he That's will cool. he will go to something and only true. this restaurant for two years until he never wants to see it again, and then he'll move on to the next one. He did that with Four Rivers. <laughs> um, he's done that with Pearls, with Blue Highway. Uh, he did it, so Mother's Pub and Grill. He gets like an addiction, goes for yeah. a while. And Mother's then... Pub and Grill, which is is now my cheers. It has been for a long time. Right. You actually had a post years ago, I'm kind of going way back now, about Shepherd's Pie. And I actually commented one time, I was like, did you ever check out their Shepherd's Pie? Because they had just changed it from a beef recipe, which you should never do, to a lamb one. And it was actually, that was when I ate it, and it was pretty good. Uh, but they used to do, they still do a $3 burger special with fries. Sure. Not gonna knock anybody's socks off, but for three bucks, the value yeah, for, that's, for the good is. I think that's one of those scenarios where like the value outweighs the actual right. like quality, right? You're like, oh, then it's three bucks. Like this is killer, right? No, I and so he he went to he ate that for years. He would go there every Wednesday and Friday when it was on special. Again, like the value is killer, but it was actually a really good burger too um, in that category that, yeah, but, that I would say was better than the P and G one for six bucks. But hold on real quick. Like, so, so with your blog, though, do you bring in the value aspect or is it just strictly the, the taste of the food? Uh, mostly just the taste of the food and the ambiance. And, and okay. I do touch on the value, though, because I'll tell people what the prices are. Uh, I'm not as concerned about it because I feel like everywhere in Gainesville is pretty affordable. Mm-hmm. Uh, but some people are, so like I like to put that information out there as well. So okay. I'll let them know like what you know the notable dishes. I'll put a price next to it. So like so one of my questions was like the the one the you know what your favorite absolute favorite is is that like that's that's public knowledge on here. Yeah, like you said crane. So yeah, I so, mean I, I think just in terms of like frequency. I oh, mean, frequency. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I know you just had crane on Tuesday, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I go, I literally go to crane like every Tuesday. Mm. Okay. Every single Tuesday. Because it's their $10 Tuesdays, and that's when they do their specials. And that's when they're really at their best, when they do their specials. And, like, the kitchen gets to be creative and, like, do bring in local ingredients and whatnot. Um, so, yeah, I, Crane is my favorite because, like, I, I just absolutely love it. So, would you say that's the one meal experience that everybody should, should try? Because that's one of my questions is, like, what, like, if you were going to say, all right, you're listening to this podcast, you're in yeah. Gainesville, the one, like if you have not tried it yet, the one place you must absolutely go and experience is? I actually, My answer to that is actually the top. Mm-hmm. Okay. Because I feel like the top is quintessential Gainesville. It's quirky, it's got like a little bit of everything, it's got like, you know, hipsters and then like professionals and like a real like hodgepodge, like mix of people and it's real diverse and like real fun atmosphere too and the food's good. So like, it's that's like I think the quintessential Gainesville like restaurant. If I was if you know somebody was coming to visit for one day and they're like, where do you where should I go? That's where you're going to the top. Okay, cool. Yeah, that's what I want to know. Yeah, I mean, I remember how excited I remember how excited you were whenever uh, Crane Crane came out because it was like, oh wow, Gainesville's getting a, yeah yeah a ramen a legit not 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 like a. a quarter a bag ramen from Walmart, but like a, a ramen place. Sure, yeah. Um, so I, that was, you talk about influence. I mean, that's one of the things I'm reading that. I was just like, oh, I can't wait to try this. Like Ken's like endorsing it like freaking crazy. You talked about the soft openings, how they were really trying to make sure that the staff got super trained. I think there was even a, if I recall, a delay because they wanted to make sure everything was airtight. 
And then when they finally launched, it was just, I mean, it quickly became one of the best places here in town. Absolutely, yeah. And that's what, it goes back to our point before about like the evolving food scene, right? That That's something that like, you know, it still exists now, but the mindset like 10 years ago was like, oh, you wanna open a ramen place? Like, isn't that just like, you know, 25 cents at Walmart? Uh, you know, people still have that misconception, but like, I think people are starting to appreciate it more because like ramen is a very deep, like very, very uh, complex uh, food from Japan. I mean, like it's revered out there. Like there's tons, like there's like, I think there's, I read something recently. There's like thousands upon thousands of ramen restaurants in Tokyo, just Tokyo. Um, yeah, it's, it's wild, man. And so like, you know, the the Marichon ramen and top ramen is just kind of like the instant version of that. Right. Like, that's like eating like instant, like craft Mac and cheese your entire life. And then like a Mac and cheese place pops up and you're like, that's that fancy Mac and cheese. <laughs> it's like, no, well that's, that's Mac and cheese. What you're eating is like the instant version. Right. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it, it's the, the evolution of the times, I guess. Um, people are starting to open up their palates more, which is great. Colin's checking out your website for the first yeah, time. Like, look. Oh yeah. <laughs> Welcome. Oh, you went That's to Alpen. Oh, I yeah, that was like one of the Alpen. Alpen's great. Yeah, it's date night. Alpen yeah. Bistro. Alpen's the perfect date night restaurant. Mm-hmm. That's this is awesome. They got Volta, best coffee house. I mean, this is. I mean, from you, an, you from took an the best pizza, and uh, this was in May. Yeah. That's coming soon. Oh, so, do you want to elaborate on that one, uh, dude? So, all right, I I am a real big fan of like authentic. Like, no, no, I hate the word authentic. Uh, like Neapolitan style like charred crust pizza, mm-hmm. like thin charred crust pizza. Like I'm really, really into that. And for a while, did you ever go to Americana Woodfire? Mm-hmm. That was like by far and that whole my story favorite. With, with, uh, yeah, that's a whole other yeah. thing. <laughs> but uh, I mean, uh, the, from, yeah, well, we, we, won't, <laughs> we, won't, we won't. James is cracking up in the corner yeah. of there. Uh, no, so I mean, that was to me by far, regardless of like everything else at that place, mm-hmm. that was by far like the best pizza to me. Like I absolutely love that pizza. Um, and I haven't found anything like that since. I mean, there's places that like come close when they're on point, but like uh, that's just like my what I like. As far as like New York style pizza, like Big Lou's is pretty good. Mm-hmm. I mean, like it's up there. Um, but like everything else, I'm just like, it's, eh. Okay, so I see nothing stands out to me. You had you had a your your best wings was was Lucy's, and I think it was V Pizza at one time. Yeah, VP. No, uh, no, no. It was, it was all, never, it's always been Lucy's. It's yeah. always Lucy's. Okay. okay. I thought that I remember. Maybe it was when you did a review of VP today that you said something about yeah. the wings. But but I think about them as a Neapolitan style and, and Medici too. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, band, I don't band, know, man. You know? Maybe it's just because like it peaked too much with Americana for me because I really dug like their uh, sour, their, like naturally fermented sourdough crust was so flavorful and delicious. Mm. Um, and I think pizza should be like charred. I mean, that's the way it should be. Right. Um, and then, but like, you know, some of these places like don't do it as much. Like if you go to Medici, they make fine pizza, but you got to tell them to burn the pizza before they give you like a pizza that's like actually what it's supposed to be. And it's not their fault. It's not like they're, they're not skilled or anything like that. It's because people complain that their pizza's right. burnt. So they had to adapt to their clientele. And that's just like, you know, like Gainesville's evolving, but it's like half there and half like, you know, not. So like, you know, I don't think people really understand. Well, even V Pizza said like their their menu, their their table inserts literally say something about the crust, and this is a fork and knife. Right. Pizza. So you it's have going to, like, to be watery. Exactly. And, so know. they have to. Yeah. So like you know, the, the biggest complaints I saw from people, you asked about like the restaurant that I loved, and people were like mad about like Americana was definitely one of them because people were complaining about it being burnt, people were complaining about it being like watery and like too thin or like whatever. It's like no man like. That's what pizza is. Right. Like you go to, like people joke about eating pizza with knife and fork. Like you go to Italy, they're eating pizza with knife and fork. Like that's just how it is. Um it's just here in the US, like the US there's there's a very distinct style. Like, you know, the US pizza, New York style pizza like evolved into like this like tons of cheese, like right. tons of like slices yeah, from here to here to yeah. here. To yeah. Here. And then like, you know, Chicago, like don't even get me started on that. That's like freaking casserole. <laughs> Tomato soup. Yeah, it's like a casserole, <laughs> yeah. you know, like circular casserole. It's like, no man, that's not pizza. So do you but, have to update your best Italian? Because yes. Manuel's been- I do I have to update that. Yeah, that's another one of those things. There's no real good Italian here, man. I mean, I, I, I've had people message me and I'll just joke like the best Italian's like in my kitchen right yeah. I, I, I honestly i feel the same way about yeah like i, I do italian because that's the one thing that i've i've studied like yeah it's my favorite thing to cook and so i've gone really far into i mean i could rattle off the lydia bastianich and, and pe- yeah, yeah, people yeah. that i've just like okay i want to mimic their yeah style, i've been but. to babo and uh i've been to uh you know, tons of like all these like, really good places up in new york and i'm just like man like 
I really, really want something like this here. But it's interesting that that's like of all cuisines. Right. Like Italian is not one that like they've really honed in So if in you had on. to have Italian right now in, and I'll, I'll say in Alachua County because there's a place that I'm thinking of. You're thinking of uh, uh, Olive Garden. Uh, Ant- Antonio's. Yeah, Antonio's. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Antonio's is pretty good, yeah. It's been a while since I like, made okay, it down yeah. there. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. A, it's been a bit of a year and a half. But. You guys see how I'm not even part of this conversation <laughs> anymore? Like I don't even know what, what I'm doing here. Yeah, so, yeah. I mean, so there's, there's, Should I just leave and just we can just I will talk. We can talk about so, Olive Garden. Yeah, make, uh, talk about Olive Garden. Colin so feels better. The best kidding, soup, huh? salad, and breadsticks in the Stop. world. And right now, if you go to Olive Garden, they're doing the buy one get one half off. Or I, I don't know what. That oh yeah, actually. all the carbs you can handle. Right. <laughs> oh yeah, don't they do that like never ending yeah, pasta right. pass? And it's like. <laughs> Non-stop giant bowls of globbing. I'm gonna reel us back in real quick. Okay, so we gotta wrap this up in a, in a minute, and then we'll like do a little side. Oh, I thought hustle. we were doing hour two. Yeah, <laughs> hour two. Let's go. Um, but the, so like, I want to pull it back to like the business side of the blog sure, yeah. a little bit, a little bit. Like, are, like, are you monetizing your blog? Like, do you get sponsors? Do you little to none. Little to none. Um, it, so it's more of a hot. Like this well, is a hobby. So this is like there's several reasons. Behind, you know. There's several reasons behind that. One being I don't want to make it into a business because it is a passion project for me. I okay. have a day job. I don't need to like you know. I think a lot of people are going to be very curious as to what your day job is. Like, can you tell us? Yeah, I um, I'm the director of business development and marketing for a financial company in town. Okay. Um, they're they're we're like on the north side of town, but you know we work in all fifty states. So um, I do a lot of travel for that, and uh, okay. yeah, that's like my nine to five, really. Okay, um, completely unrelated. But uh, anyways, like I, I don't want to turn it into like a, a chore, right? So like as soon as I like turn something I love into being a chore, it's like I don't want to do it anymore, right? Because I'll feel like oh I gotta like post X amount, I gotta do this, sure. like I gotta I gotta get this up by this time. Or else, like people get pissed at me because you know I, I gotta answer to people. And you have taken a little bit of a step back over the last. I have, yeah. You know. It's just it's just a little much, man. Like uh, between like I, I'm one of those people that like takes too many interests and in too many things, so like it just kind of got lost in the shuffle. Mm-hmm. And I've been doing it for six years. It's like all right, it's getting a little bit stale, but I still want to do it because like I enjoy it. But uh, anyways, uh, the other thing is like it's very difficult to monetize without compromising what you're able to say. And you're not integrity, but like, I think it's blatantly obvious when people get paid to write a certain piece, right? Like people aren't stupid. Like if you're reading a piece and it's just like obviously a fluff piece, you're like, like, well, Yeah, no, I wouldn't say to do that, but like, I mean, even if like a business wanted to advertise, I don't know. Like, yeah, and, and so like I, a de- a, a unrelated, like I don't think you could ever really take sponsorship from a restaurant because that would look completely unauthentic. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, so there are a couple. So there are a couple like ads on there, and it's like just from restaurants that like I've positively reviewed. And like you know, I, I there's an, actually a page on my website that says like sponsorship. Okay. And it I write in like blurbs on there that say like you know if you want to advertise on here, you have to be a place that like I like and like advertising on here does not guarantee that I write anything good about you. Okay. It's, it's kind of, I mean, it's kind of similar to like podcasting, right? Like I'm not yeah. going to, I'm not going to accept the sponsorship for the podcast of a company that I, it has w- to be that I wouldn't like right. use that I wouldn't, you know, it, it, if it's a service, like if I, if I'm not using the service myself, you know, like it's got to be authentic to, sure. to me and something that I would actually use and promote, right? Yeah. Like, what are you looking at? Sorry, I'm, I'm laughing because I had a note on here, but then I just went to the what's coming and <laughs> the the Nukes eatery. Why do you care? <laughs> what? what are you looking at? Uh, oh, Nukes. It's it's a running joke. It is a running joke, and I'm <laughs> frankly sick of it. But I'm sure you are. Yeah, it's it's amazing. But anyways. Um, I don't know. It's just tough, man. Like it's such a delicate balance that yeah. like I just kind of gave up on it. But then of course people like the first thing people say when they like dislike what I have to say or just like dislike me in general for whatever reason is like, oh, he only writes good things about restaurants if they give him free food. First of all, false. Uh, like I go to Crane Ramen so much and they'll tell you I like pay for every single damn meal. I do not ask them for anything. Like there was one person that like argue, made that argument to me and I actually posted a screenshot of like my my debit card activity for the last year of Crane and then the people still like you know run with right. it so yeah. it's it's whatever well, there's always going to be haters right yeah, yeah, I mean, exactly. you're like yeah. you're writing a blog I, I just like engaging them because it's fun yeah 
I, I find entertainment in it. But anyways, um, I mean, I'm sure, surely they give you like the hook of an extra steam bun or something every now and then. I mean, every now and then, like people will do that. Like, uh, but like, what am I supposed to do? Right. Like pick it up and throw it in the trash? Right. Like, no, I can't. I'm sorry. I can't accept. Like, this. I don't go into <laughs> places like people think I go into places going like, give me food. Right. Like you're going to get a bad or I will you slam give, yeah. you. It's like, no man, like that's not what I do. And if, if there's somebody that can come forward and like definitively, definitively prove that, like I will just like walk off the face of the earth. Like it's not like, that's not a thing. Oh. But anyways, <laughs> uh, but yeah, people think that I do that anyway. So I was like, well crap, like maybe I should just like do that and monetize on it. But I don't know, man, at the end of the day, it's like, I want to be able to live with myself <laughs> and uh, like as long as I know what I'm doing is correct and like people I care about know what I'm doing is correct then whatever. I Man, it's cool if it's not yeah. like I mean if it's a hobby and it's just something you yeah, enjoy it's just doing a hobby, then, yeah. then then do it. And that's really what it is at the end of the day. Like I'm more concerned about like having good places in Gainesville and uh, you know being able to share my experiences with people like Dude, that's like the most, that's better than like any sponsorship money you can give me. And like people think that that's inauthentic, but it's absolutely true. Like, you know, I, I've had restaurants tell me like, oh, you wrote a review about us and then our sales like tripled. And it's like, it's great. Yeah. I mean, I love it. Like, it, it's just. I mean, it's very much like what we were just talking about at the beginning right. of the podcast. Yeah. It's like, I mean, I, f- I feel good when when a company like Dryers DKI hears right. that, you know, Basketball Cop needed a rap and like, you know, and like makes that happen. We got like computers going off. Oh. It's like 10 o'clock at night inside of our <laughs> studio. Forced, forced update. The computers want to go to try, bed. Try again tonight. Yeah. <laughs> but, but I feel good like when I hear that these things, that these connections have happened Absolutely, because of yeah. this platform, right? And it's the same thing it's absolutely like if, if you know the the food is so great and like you and you talk about how great it is and you know yeah. it brings them more business well good right and then there's people that you know people message me and they're like i never would have found this place if i didn't see your post and i'm like great like good like That's spread cool. spread the word you know yeah and then you know you get these restaurants and also like you know i'll go back in there after i write put something something positive they're like well how do we thank you like you know here's this like oh here's God. that i'm like you thank me by continuing to be fucking awesome like what you've been doing and just sharing your food with people. And they have, like, you know, there's, there's been really good stories from it. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool, so, man. And, and that's, that's really what, like, makes me feel good about it. And I, I, I you keep your money. Like, I don't need your money. Like, yeah. keep it. <laughs> it's cool. It's super interesting. Yeah. It's, it's neat to see that it's, you know, six years? Six years now, six yeah. Six years, man. It's crazy, that's man. Crazy. <laughs> it is crazy that's to think awesome. about. It's awesome. So, well, I I don't feel like it's even appropriate for me to wrap up this episode. I feel like I just kind of like step out of the picture here and just let Mike wrap wrap this thing up. Well, no. So, I mean, there, there's a couple more things we'll hit on the side hustle, but okay. I, I'll, yeah. I'll tell you, dude, thank you so much for coming. This Absolutely. has been so much thank fun. You guys. I mean, he's got like a man crush on you, dude. Like, I don't know about <laughs> crush, but I've just been like legit reading him for he, a long time. He is time. a big. He's That's a big awesome, booty. Man. He's a big. Yeah. Booty. And I, I'm lucky when I get to travel with this guy because you know we're like we're always scoping out like the you know hell yeah. The, the scenes man we're trying to get yeah. like the locals we don't want to like do the the chain stuff or anything we, we're quick so we got to go to uh italy flew us out to uh to florence uh for vespa, vespa <laughs> flew us, yeah i'll get that right vespa flew us out the, um, the country of italy, the country flew of italy flew us out. <laughs> yeah. they were like oh we've heard about you we listened to the podcast now vespa uh flew us out for a conference out there so we got to go to florence in february of last year oh man that's um, awesome and that yeah, honestly it was really my awesome. my first finally uh trip abroad um you'd been i mean you've been a military brat so you'd been a, a lot of places but um it was it was cool to finally be there you talk about uh people in italy eating pizza with a fork and knife well so i wanted to eat Find pizza in Italy, but it's like you, you go to the local, you, you have two options. You can either go to Yelp and find out what everybody does, or you find mm-hmm. somebody that looks like they live there and you say, hey, where do you eat? You, yeah, yeah. You know, like I wanna eat where you eat. Sure. <laughs> and and that's what we that's what we pretty much did. It was cool. Um, it was it was really, really awesome. I'm yeah. glad that we no, did it was, that. It was great. But, we found like these little mom and pop pizza places. That's like, awesome. Right there. in the middle of Florence, yeah. like, like almost, almost hidden in a way. Yeah. You know, they don't really have like, you Great start wondering signage. if you're like, if it's a joke. Yeah, you're like, <laughs> like uh, am I going to get mugged out if I'm walking down these yeah, side streets? If, you, know? if you don't feel like you're potentially in danger, <laughs> you're not, you're you're not doing it right. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. yeah. That's awesome. It was uh, really, really cool. I, I really enjoyed it. So I, like, I love traveling with this guy for that purpose. Like, <laughs> well, I mean, I'm, there's other reasons. You know, you're, you're my, you're my, uh, my, you're my man. Yeah, he's, he's a swell <laughs> best, chap. My, my best bud. Yeah. yeah, swell chap. You're my best bud. Yeah. Um, but no, he's definitely got a, the, the hook up into like, he knows where to scope out the best food, man. I just love to eat. So, Amen, so brother. Yeah, like <laughs> it's, it's one of my like you know I work a lot, I do a lot. It's like it, it's something I look forward to. It's like man, 
what do I get to eat for lunch today? It just excites me. Like, uh, yeah. I get to, I get to eat. <laughs> And I don't want, I don't so believe the highlight in, of my day. Sometimes. Yeah. I don't believe in just yeah. like, like Colin is the type of person Well, you, you've, you've started enjoying stuff more, but like if he didn't have to eat, he wouldn't. Yeah. What's, like, yeah, what's that thing people say? Like some people live to eat. Other people just eat, eat to, to live. live. Yes. Yeah. He's an eat yeah. to live. I have um, definitely been an eat to live. It's like, dude, it's just like, I just, all right, I need food just to just, keep going. Let's get it over with. Uh, I'll find myself <laughs> the darkest parts of my day. And I'm like, man, what do I want to have for dinner tonight? <laughs> yeah. Like, so I mean it's just different like so yeah. like if I'm having a very social fun experience like the date night with my wife mm -hmm. and going to the five places like I legitimately enjoyed that as like a lot of fun you know going to five different places but most most times especially when it comes to business it's just like dude like next I mean next week's a great example we're gonna be super busy it's just like all right like just just give me food so I can keep going <laughs> <laughs> it's just the way it is you got you but, got any tips for Columbus Ohio I can't, I can't say I've ever okay. been to Columbus. No. I've never been okay. to Ohio, okay. actually. Yeah, I'm going we're, there next we're month. We're going for a conference. Uh -huh. Yeah, we'll have cool. to find out some good places in Columbus, College Town, uh, State uh, Capital. So. I don't know if they have it, but a um, little like secret of the trade here. Well, it's not really a secret, but it's what I do uh, when I travel. Is I use Eater.com and mm -hmm. only Eater.com. I don't trust Yelp. I don't trust Google. Nothing like that. About but trip, uh, diners, dives, and dives. You ever? Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Flavor Town is not for me, man. Uh, <laughs> But uh, yeah, eater.com is a really good resource. If you guys have never been there, okay, check it out. Sweet. All right, cool. Dude, thanks so much for being here. Absolutely. It was so much fun for right, you guys. So for everybody who is listening, where can they find you? Where can they connect with you? Yeah, so uh, I am on Facebook and Instagram. I don't do Twitter, uh, but those are both Ken Eats Gainesville, obviously. And then I'm also on the web at keneatsgainesville.com. And they can find all of Ken's favorite places all of I mean, it. What, what's on, like, uh, I mean, every category. Oh, right? sure, yeah. He's got best ofs in all the categories, pictures, blogs, reviews, what's coming. That's always a good thing. I mean, Butler Plaza Celebration Point, they're always growing. Uh, you, you're a news breaker often uh, yeah, on a lot much. of that stuff. It's like you're the first to know. So. It's influence, yeah. baby. Yeah. Influence. It's pretty great. It's crazy. It's awesome, man. Six years in. Yeah. Awesome. Well, like, for anybody that we pissed off on this episode, <laughs> just want to apologize. And uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> he's, <laughs> Ken, sorry. He's you not. You donate to our Patreon. We'll say something nice about yeah. the next episode. There you go. <laughs> Donate to their Patreon, and I'll come back and say the complete opposite things I've been saying. Uh, no, but we would definitely appreciate the the support on Patreon, and, and we are looking for sponsors for our podcast. Um, so reach out. You can reach out to me directly at Colin at RepaintTheWall.com, and um, that's it. Gainesville. Thank you, the world. I mean, really, the world. I mean, world. we got we got so many. This thing's growing like crazy. We're so appreciative. Thank you so much for listening. This is the WHOA GNV podcast, the podcast bringing you businesses and individuals that make you go, whoa. whoa. Can you give us your best whoa? Whoa! <laughs> we will see you later. Bye. <laughs>